You know, a few years ago, when it looked like the new wave of VR might have been in the process of taking off, we definitely thought about the next game maybe being VR. Because like right around when The Witness finished was sort of when that was happening. And it was like, well, if we do a new game, what is it going to be? And didn't didn't end up, you know, even our company is not very big, but like it's very risky to say we're going to make VR games with the size of the audience being what it is, right? So that kind of got put on hold, but I, I definitely had a number of interesting ideas of what I would do with VR games. And I do think that if I'm going to be a little bit critical about the way the way the industry has approached this, like I do think that the best, I mean, this won't be a surprise to most people. I, I think that the best VR games are designed explicitly for VR, right? They're not games that you mm-hmm. did for something else and then came along and ported later on, right? Those those tend to be weird. But then what does designed for VR mean, right? And And for me, it means really using using what are actually the good parts of the system and not like what what is the marketing and PR of what it's supposed to be, right? So the marketing and PR of what it's supposed to be is that it's super immersive and like you're really there and whatever. And I never really bought that. Like if you're watching a movie, you're really immersed in the movie just on a flat screen. And if you're reading a good book, you're really immersed in the book, right? So like there is a little bit of a quality of immersion that you get in VR, but it's if you break it down to practical things, it's something more like I can accurately judge distances in a freaking 3D game or whatever, which I can't do when it's projected on a small screen. And it, it feels more real in that way. Like I can reach out my arm to grab something without thinking about it and my hand goes to the right place. Okay, that's really interesting, but that's a very concrete thing to design around. It's not like, ooh, immersion. It's like, okay, you can do this, you can do that. And then there's other things like the finger tracking stuff that various people did. It, I didn't think worked very well. and um, to me, what's fascinating though, is that when you have a VR headset, you have very good head tracking and very good tracking over two hands. And that is, I think it's underappreciated how interesting that is because historically in games, how how much information can you send to the game? I have like a couple buttons and maybe right. like one analog stick, right? Mm-hmm. And if you yeah. if you want to get mathy about it, it's like a couple of degrees of freedom worth of information. It's like not very much. And uh, you know, in in VR, you have eighteen degrees of freedom. Uh, prox- some of them are constrained together, but you have a lot more plus a bunch of buttons and stuff. And that's just like way more richness of communication that the player has to tell the game about what the player wants to do, right? Um, you know, usually in games, it's all just pixels coming. Like if you quantify the amount of information in like a 4K screen, 60 FPS at 24 bit color, it's like insane amounts of information coming back at you, but very little going in. And VR helps us even that out just a little bit. So I would be interested in it from that standpoint. Also, um, I do, you know, back when we used to have fun before coronavirus, Um, I used to do a lot of dancing and stuff. And so I always want to do like way more over the top stuff in VR, like than than games usually do. Right. So like, I want to, you know, I want to do the version of Beat Saber where you actually have to like jump across the room all the time and like slide and duck and then like, you know, leap over things. Like I want, I want hardcore (laughs) Beat Saber, but like. (laughs) I'm in for that. The thing that, so being good at Beat Saber or being good at DDR is actually about minimizing your amount of motion, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're trying to do, the levels get faster and faster and you're yeah. doing all this stuff, right? And so if you're Economy, like good, yeah. if you're good at Beat Saber, you kind of just mostly stand in one place and then move as little as possible to do all the fast things. But I, I would design a game where it's like, no, you actually need to move your body a great deal. And it's not necessarily about being fast, but about being um, elegant and and smooth and, and all that stuff. That would be fun. 